What's going on YouTube? It's Wayne with Wayne's Fish World and I am back after two months of not uploading a video. Guys, why? Did, where did I go? Why did I disappear? I'm going to answer it right here. It's a simple, simple explanation. I took a vacation because I just got tired of hearing the negative feedback on YouTube. You know, I made the videos for people out there who want to learn, to teach people, to uh, help people, to inspire people. And that was my goal, but I just got a little tired of hearing the bad crap on YouTube. You know, I replied probably to 20 people a day or more, good people, and then you get about five people a day who are just absolutely stupid and ignorant and they just bitch at everything. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, they're either they're jealous of you or they don't like you personally or they just got nothing else better to do than bitch. And excuse my French, but that's just the truth and I got tired of hearing it. I got child tired of hearing childish crap over YouTube because you can't watch a single fish video without scrolling down to the comments and either seeing, you know, this person's stupid, this person's gay, this person's retarded, you're stupid because you don't have the most high-tech lights and you're inferior to me. You know, that stuff gets old real quick and I just need to take a little breather from it. But guys, I'm back, not going anywhere. Like I said, uh, not going anywhere. And I want to come back at you guys today and talk about refugiums. And this is the latest thing I've upgraded on my saltwater tank, so why not talk about what I just did yesterday? Uh, let's dive right in, guys. So, basically, I took off the uh, clamp-on light with the compact fluorescent, which absolutely did almost nothing to my uh, ma uh, macroalgae in the refugium. And I took off the heat lamp fixture, which I used to raise ducks, chickens, geese, whatever, and I clamped it on here. And I'm going to add some screws on that brace, that way it doesn't slide off. And I also put some zip ties together just to make sure in case this thing ever does slide off, the zip ties are going to catch it and it can't go into the water, electrocuting my fish, maybe catching a fire, and God knows what. So, isn't it kind of scary how much shit we put around our tanks that are electrical? Whew. I don't even want to think about that. But, uh, basically what I did is I took the bulb and I replaced that too and I got this. You guys can find this thing at Lowe's. It's a, uh, what is this, 15 watt? 15 watt equivalent to 55 watt 5000K LED light, 800 lumens, and it's got a uh, 38 degree beam coming out of it. What that means is, you know, 180, 180 degrees is a straight line, 360 is a circle. This has 38 degrees coming down, and you can kind of actually see the light in that 38 degree sense. Um, these great thing about these lights are, you know, you run this thing three hours a day for what was it, a year, and it'll cost you $1.81. That's not bad at all. If you run this thing three hours a day, it'll last you 27.4 years. That's crazy. It might cost you a lot up front, but long-term energy bills, this thing is going to save you a lifetime. You don't have to replace bulbs. You don't. I mean, it's great. So, I put this thing on my saltwater refugium because I use it on my 125, and you guys can see that the plants are actually just going nuts. Uh, plants come out of the water to grow. It, it sometimes, you know, if I trim it up, it'll look good, really, really good for one minute, and then it'll be overgrown, and it's like, oh my god, what in the world is going on? You know, then you gotta fix it because some plants have overgrown and they've smothered other plants. But what I'm trying to say is, if it's doing all that good to my plants in my 125, why not put it on my macroalgae and see if it does the same thing? 5,000K is pretty good for uh, plants to grow in, so hopefully it has the same effect on the saltwater plants. Has 65K, wasn't working out so well. We're gonna see. So, macroalgae, do they actually work? Do they actually remove? Toxins in your water. Yes, they do. But you gotta be logical, guys. You guys see my 125, right? Here it is. You have to have a certain balance point. You have to have a certain amount of fish with a certain amount of fish, I mean, a certain amount of fish with a certain amount of plants to actually have nitrates and phosphates being removed from your system. Now, plants will remove nitrates and phosphates. It's one of the elements they eat to thrive. Nitrates will give the plant stem and leaf growth. Uh, phosphates will help the roots grow. Phosphates will actually stay in the soil longer too, but uh, that's a different story. Long, term, uh, long story short, they do absorb nitrates and phosphates, but you have to have a lot of plants for a lot of bio load you have. Um, some saltwater threads, they'll say you need 70% of your water volume to be your refugium in order to remove all nitrates from your system. Now, is that true? 
No, it's not true. Because how much fish do you have in your tank? How much corals do you have in your tank? How much are you feeding? You know, there are many variables in that. So something like that is just a rule of thumb. Like one inch per one inch of fish per gallon of water. It's just a rule of thumb. So you can't really go by that. It's just a guideline to help you out. So is that enough macroalgae to remove nitrates in my system? No, it's not. Um, that's why I have a couple legs to the table, and I preach that a lot in my videos. You have to have three legs or more to a table to hold it up. Very rarely in the saltwater world or the fish, even the freshwater world, you can't have one center leg and expect it to support your system. I do very little water changes because I'm lazy. I'm very lazy at water changes. I hate doing it. Um, it's just it's boring. I don't like doing it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. You know, it's boring. Uh, so I get around that by supplementing nutrients to my tank, like be ionic and stuff, etc., vitamins, whatever. And basically, I remove nitrates and phosphates through a couple different ways: a deep sand bed, macroalgae, uh, a denitrator, which I just made, which is the same thing as a uh, deep sand bed, just add an extra little kick, overkill on a protein skimmer, and Chemi Pure Elite. I love Chemi Pure Elite. Uh, it's going to help, but don't take advantage of it. Also, I'm about to add a canister filter with UV light on this thing, and I'm also going to add another canister filter just for uh, extra mechanical filtration. That way, no debris is going up into my main system. Uh, you may ask, what, what in the world is that trash can doing in my tank? Got lazy, micron sock broke. I took the stuff you find at Walmart for like pillow fabric, polyester fi fabric or whatever, dropped it in there, it's removing debris, it's easier to clean than a micron sock, you take it out, you can wash it out or you can throw it away, either way it's still working, and it's cheaper than a micron sock, it might look ugly but it's under the sump, you won't be able to see it, so I don't care, I want the display to look nice, not the sump, I mean the sump, it's okay to make your sump look nice too, but if it's cheap and it gets the job done, why not? That's the main purpose of DIY, right? Um, so, guys, yes, macroalgaes will work. Will it hang on the back refugium work on your tank? I'm just going to come out and say no because it's just, it's not likely. You would have to have a very, 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 very low bio load in your system for a small little hang on the back refugium to work. Now, don't get me, get me wrong. It might actually work, but no two systems are the same. But let's say 99.9% .9 of the time, your hang on the back refugium is only going to help. It's not going to remove nitrates and phosphates fully. It's going to help, but it's not going to, you know, fully remove nitrates and phosphates. So, how can you actually get nitrates and phosphates out of your system if you don't have a refugium, or if you have a refugium and you still got nitrates and phosphates? Well, you could think about adding a deep sand bed. Here's the downside of deep sand beds: they're kind of expensive. Uh, it takes time to mature. And you can have anaerobic bacteria with uh, dead spots, and that leads to sulfuric acid, and that gets disturbed. You can say bye-bye fish. Um, it's scary. Yes, it is. But if I do it, it's not that scary. Bottom line, you don't want to disturb it. Um, you want to have live organisms in there, like bristle worms, pods, and etc., working your deep sand bed. That way it doesn't go bad. Uh, you can have a denitrite fire overkilling your protein skimmer. That way it takes the organics in your system and drives it out before it goes into the nitrogen cycle and it turns into an N-factor of nitrates. Um, water changes. Water changes your best friend because, yeah, I'm lazy to it so I can't, you know, I'm hypocritical, but at least I can tell you what's good, right? Water changes are going to promote fish growth, coral growth. It replaces nutrients in your water like vitamins, uh, elements that are crucial for growth, like I said, and health of your fish and corals and invertebrates. So, water changes are the best way to do it, guys. Refugiums, deep sand beds, nit denitrators, uh, reactors, water I said water changes. So, guys, there's many ways out there. You can use chemicals, media, but to be honest, guys, you've got to find your own balance point. I can't tell you what's going to work for you. I can help you. You can tell me what fish you've got and what size tank you've got, but when it comes down to it, you're going to have to fiddle around, probably waste some money, play around with it, and just discover what works for you. And you know what sucks? If you get this one tank and figure out what works for this one tank, you'll probably try the same thing on the next one, and it won't work. That's just because no two systems are the same. So, refugiums, do they work? Do they not work? Yes, they do work, but you have to be realistic. You can't have, you know, 
a grouper in there, a lionfish, a moray eel, a bunch of tangs, and expect this one little clump of macroalgae the size of your fist to take out all the nitrates and phosphate in your tanks. It's just not going to happen, guys. Uh, if you put a mouse in a glass dome, well, let me put it better. If you put a squirrel under the sea in a glass dome with a big oak tree in the middle, yes, it's going to supply oxygen to the squirrel. But if you put a whole forest in there, the oxygen is going to be depleted because the animals are going to breathe in faster than the tree can. So think of it that way, guys. Um, that being said, refugiums do work, guys, but you've got to be realistic. I'm back, guys. Next video, probably going to be on the 125. I'm not showing you either tank because the 125 is overgrown. <clears throat> and the 55 gallon, I got to do some maintenance on it. The tank is kind of dirty. Glass is covered in coralline algae. I got some work to do. Other than that, guys, I'll be back very soon. Comment, rate, and subscribe. I'm happy to be back. Tell me if you think it's good for me to be back. Tell me where you, uh, where you think I was. I'm pretty sure some people thought I was dead because... If you don't make videos for a week on YouTube, everybody thinks you're dead, man. Comment, rate, subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. If you know how